Hi everybody, I'm James Golding and welcome to Gunroom TV Food. So today we're going to be cooking a pheasant a scallop. And pheasant's fantastic this time of year. Uh, this one's from St. Clair's. And a lot of people tend to roast the birds whole, but I thought it'd be quite nice to do a dish which just focuses on the breast. And you, you can use the other bits and pieces and things like stocks or you can confit it, but we'll talk about that in another episode. So for this dish you'll need obviously a pheasant breast, some of this lovely garden uh, curly kale. Now you can use Cavolo Nero or chard or you know some, uh, some other kind of nice fresh kind of brassica, but I'm using kale today because this is banging season. Uh, some eggs for the panne, some lovely breadcrumbs, some flour, a little bit of parsley, some capers and lemon juice. So the idea is that this is all in the prep and once we start cooking it'll all come together quite quickly. So to begin with we're going to prep our pheasant breast. So I've got some cling film here and cling film is probably one of the best things to use uh, for this job because you can you know you can batter out and use a meat hammer but I find that the cling film sort of makes it hold its shape quite well and if you are a little bit heavy-handed with the um, with the uh, meat hammer then this stops it from tearing and falling apart. So I'm going to put about two or three layers of the cling film. Now this is catering cling film. You can actually pick this up from your local supermarket. Try and get the stuff which is a little bit thinner. Um, it, it works a bit better and it sticks to things better. I sometimes find that the slightly thicker stuff makes, uh, makes your life a little bit harder. So that's three layers there. So I'll cut that off. And then this is going to become a multi-purpose roll and you'll see why in a minute. So our pheasant breast is just going to be laid on top of the cling film. You can see that it's got the, the natural fold there from the uh, fillet. So we'll just open that out so that you've got a good surface area. Take a nice sharp knife and just cut sort of in between the breasts. So basically what we're doing is we're opening it out. And you can see that that's already quite nicely spread out already. But now what we want to do is just make it that little bit bigger. And that's how you form the escallop. Now some people could call it a schnitzel, um, if you're from you know, Germany or Austria you call this a schnitzel but we call it a scallop. So using the clink film, could use a rolling pin, we're just going to gently pat this out. And because pheasant's quite delicate, uh, don't go too hard, you know it's not like doing a pork schnitzel or a piece of beef, you know you're just sort of gently patting the breast out like so. Have a little check. Feel free to just have a look every now and again. That looks absolutely perfect. So, I'm just going to grab some salt. We're going to lightly season this now with a little bit of blackthorn salt. And both sides. So, flip it over. And you could season this afterwards, but because we're pan frying this, it'll get nice and crispy on the outside. So when you, when you season it afterwards, the salt tends to fall off. So that's why I do this at this stage of the process. So we're patting that down. That's just to get all the salt in there. And then we have our panne. So a panne is basically a very posh way of saying flour, uh, eggs and breadcrumbs. So I've got some little trays here. Set this to one side and we'll set that up. So you want to think about the process. We're going to start off with flouring the, the pheasant, then it's going into the egg wash, which is kind of our glue, and then into our breadcrumbs. So we want to make sure that that's all in the right order. Should do it this way. There we go. So one egg will probably do the trick. Crack that in. And then with a whisk, just going to break that. Like so, and we've got our flour, and you can use plain flour is absolutely fine. You don't need to be using anything other than that, really. So we're going to gently flour this down, and we want to cover the whole breast of the pheasant. Use your hands to kind of even it out, and then into our egg, and then into the breadcrumbs. 
Now these breadcrumbs, I, I didn't buy these, I made these. And it's very, very easy. You just set your oven to the lowest setting, put some sliced bread in there. I, I used a uh, malted for this and leave it in there for about sort of 10, 15 minutes and then just blitz them up in a food processor or a blender. And there you go. So I'm actually going to leave that now in the breadcrumbs while we sort out the kale. Okay, so now it's time for the kale. And this is kind of my top tip really. You can blanch this in boiling hot water, you can put it in a pan, whatever you like to do. I would advise you not to fry it um, without blanching it first. So one of the ways I quite like to prepare my kale is with boiling water straight from the kettle. And what this does is it blanches it quite quickly, but at the same time doesn't allow it to overcook. So I've got a freshly boiled kettle here, and it's really, really simple. It's literally just pouring this boiling water straight over the kale. Now this kale has been washed first, obviously. It's very important to wash your greens. And that's now gonna sit for around five or six seconds, give it a little shake, make sure that all of the leaves are submerged in the water and straight over to the sink. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour this through a colander, rinse it under the cold tap to set the chlorophyll and then get ready for uh, plating up. So, through the colander, back into the container. You see, we've just rinsed it under the cold tap, and what that's doing is it's stopping it from going brown. It's, uh, it's very important to refresh your greens after you've blanched them. So, just use your hands, because you can feel you know, the, the leaves cooling down there. Once they get down to about body temperature, we're just going to drain them off. Okay, so we'll set those to one side. Now it's time to cook our pheasant scallop. You'll need the pheasant breast that's been sat in the breadcrumbs and uh, a nice amount of uh, rapeseed oil. So we'll go to the stove and cook this now. For the pheasant breast, you need to have a nice large non-stick frying pan. I quite like using the non-stick pan because the uh, breadcrumbs fry nicely on it and they don't stick. So it's quite important that you don't burn this because any burning of the breadcrumbs will mean it goes a little bit bitter. And the idea is we want to cook this and get it nice and crispy before the breadcrumbs are overcooked. So, we've got some cold pressed rapeseed oil. I'm going to add a good amount into the pan because it's almost like you're shallow frying. It's not, it's not a sort of quick sear. This is a, a, a nice sort of gentle uh, shallow fry. So that's coming up to temperature now. We've got our pheasant breast. As you can see, all the breadcrumbs are nicely stuck to that. There's no patches or anything like that on the breast which could possibly you know, cause it to overcook. So, gently into the pan. Now, you want it to start bubbling around the edges. You don't want it to fry. You don't want it to make that sort of tss, you know, searing noise, which I do talk about in my other um, recipes. The pheasant is now starting to bubble up around the sides. So we're going to keep an eye on that, give it a little kind of wiggle so to get some of that oil underneath. And we're probably looking at about two or three, three minutes each side. So we'll drop that down to a medium high heat and we'll talk a little bit about the sauce. So for the sauce, this is basically what the French would call a burn noisette. Over here we call it a brown butter sauce and it's very classic, you can serve it with fish, um, but we also like to serve it with meats, and there's different variations on the fish side and the meat side, but the, the whole process is still very, very similar. So the idea is, is that we're gonna cook the butter down until the point where the butter milk starts to color up and get that lovely nutty flavor. And once that's happened, we're gonna stop the cooking process with some lemon juice and add in some chopped onion or shallot, some of our uh, lovely medium-sized capers, and some garden parsley. So let's go and check our pheasant. Oh, that's looking good. So like I said, I've used um, uh, brown bread crumbs for this, and that's because I quite like that malty, nutty flavor that you get from uh, frying this. Now you can use white bread. Um, I wouldn't use anything, say, 
you know, anything like pumpernickel or anything like that, nothing too dark because obviously the darker the bread is, the quicker it will colour and the more likely it is to burn. So look, you see that's getting a lovely golden colour. This uh, rapeseed oil is actually really yellow anyway, so it does actually complement the colour of the, the pheasant, the scallop, really well. And I can see that it's starting to cook. So as you cook it, you can see the pink um, inside of the, the scallop and that starts to turn more sort of pheasant cooked colour. So I'm turning that over now. Give it a little press down. Shake it again, make sure that you've got the oil underneath. Now if you were doing multiple um, scallops, say you're cooking for the family, you can cook all these off ahead of time and then put them on a tray and keep them at around sort of 50, 60 degrees in your oven just to stay warm. They will stay nice and crispy. So, okay, that's coming up nicely. Got a good old press down. So while that's cooking, I've got a little saucepan here, and we're going to bring that up to temperature. And all of this will happen relatively quickly, so it's quite important to uh, get everything ready ahead of time. That's colouring up really nicely now. You can see the you can see the pheasants almost cooked. So I'm going to drop that down to a minimum heat now and we'll talk a bit about the sauce. So we want about a quarter of a block of butter and that's going to go straight into our pan and we're going to leave that to melt. Once that starts melting we need to really focus on what it's doing because the worst thing for this sauce is you take it too far and the buttermilk burns. With the kale I'm actually going to run this through the same pan as the uh, pheasant once I turn off the heat and what that will do is get a nice bit of heat into the kale and we can season it all up and it will give it a lovely shine as well. So let's have a look at this, that's looking stunning. So I'm going to turn that off now. As I said, kale's going in. This will make a bit of noise. And we shall season this, give it a bit of salt. So the, the heat is off of that pan now, there's no heat, it's just a residual heat in the pan. And you see our buttons coming up nicely now. We'll turn that down a little bit, going crazy. We'll cut our lemon, and you'll see how quickly this comes together once we're, once we're ready to plate. So, check for any seeds because obviously those seeds will go into the sauce if you're not careful. Some amazing smells going on here. It smells really good. So give the kale a nice little turn, make sure that's warming through nicely in the pan. You can see the pheasant, I mean that's looking really great. Okay, so all the butter is melted now. What we're looking for is that layer of brown butter on the bottom of the pan. And it'll come up pretty quick. You'll see the buttermilk split out. The butter fat will rise to the top. That will then start to cook the buttermilks, the butter solids, I should say. And you'll see that colour come through. Okay. There we go. I think it's coming through now. So, lemon up the ready. foaming up. As it foams up you know that's now stopped frying the butter milk and I can see the brown butter starting to form at the bottom of the pan and then just before it starts to get too dark we add in our lemon. So we'll bring that over now. We'll add in our onions our capers, do all of them, and our chopped parsley. Now, the reason why you put the lemon juice in first is so that when you put all these other ingredients in, they don't burn and fry. We want them just to warm through gently. This is a very delicate sauce, and uh, if you add them in while the butter's frying hot, then it just turns everything off colour. So, set that to one side, 
and we're gonna plate up our dish. So, on our plates we have, obviously, our kale, which you can see, it's not overcooked, it's not fried, it's literally just warmed through in the, the, the juices from the uh, pheasant scallop. Put those to the, about two o'clock on the plates. Got our perfectly golden brown pheasant scallop. We'll just sort of lay over the top there. And then very simply, the sauce. Now you want to make sure that you get a good amount of the, the garnish on the sauce. Don't put all the butter on and leave all the garnish in the, in the pan. So a good amount of that garnish on and then drizzle the butter around the outside to make sure that the whole plate is dressed nicely. And there you have it. That's my pheasant scallop with wilted curly kale and bernoisette and caper butter sauce.